Hi everybody, how are you? Welcome to Lunchtime Live, happy Thursday. I am Pia from Stitches and Scraps and this is my weekly Lunchtime Live, um, which is basically, for those of you who are new, a weekly newsletter that I follow up at the end with a demo um, of something quick. So today's demo by request from one of our viewers is the Seersucker Stitch. Um, which is a knit stitch that I used in a recent pattern. I'm going to put a little welcome message in the comments here real quick. Say hi so I know you're here. I love to chat with you so if you do log on to watch this live please do say hi so that we can chat. Um, ask any questions. This is about me communicating with you. Hi Beth, it's good to see you. I'm so glad you joined us again. Um, Beth is actually the one who requested the seersucker stitch for today. But I have a lot to get through before we get there. Um, it's been in a very exciting um, week of mail deliveries and I want to show you all the cool stuff I got. But first, let's talk about what's new at Stitches and Scraps this week. Um, today's new, or not today, this week's new pattern is the Unicorn Fridge Magnet. Um, let me bring it closer so you can see better. Um, so it's part of the Fridgies crochet along that I've been working on all year. Um, you can see some of the other magnets behind me, the bunny and the bear and the fox. This is number four for April. This is the unicorn. You can get all the patterns in the main Fridgies Cal um, post. Now any of the things I mentioned, again for the people who are new, any of the things I mentioned today are all linked in one post on the blog. Um, there's a post for the live video and that link is in the comments in the description on the video. So go ahead and check that out if you want to see any of the things I'm showing you like the unicorn fridge magnet or the Fridgies cow. So the next thing that's on um, the blog this week is the knit left cross tutorial. Actually I'm going to switch cameras here real quick so you can see this closely. So in the border, you see these tiny little cables on this square. This is Dorothy's square. It's named for my mother-in-law. Um, this stitch in the center is the seersucker stitch that we're going to do the demo on later. This stitch here is the left cross stitch, which I posted a tutorial on um, earlier this week. So check that out. Actually, not earlier this week, earlier today. I posted that this morning, actually. Um, okay, so that one's new. That's what's new this week on the blog, but I have so much new stuff coming up and I've got to show you all the goodies I got. So I'm gonna start with Clover. If you guys don't know Clover, they make pretty much all the tools I use. Um, they make my favorite needles. They make my, or not knitting needles, but the um, darning needles, these ones. The bent tip darning needles that I use. They make the cutter that I use. And this is all stuff I bought even before I was blogging. So this is like, I've been a Clover fan since the beginning of time. Um, but they're also great to work with and they love to share their new stuff with me. So I got two new things from Clover to show you. First of all, this one, this is the Wonder Knitter. Now, I don't know how many of you are familiar with a French knitter. I am actually not a huge fan of the French knitter because usually it's faster for me to just knit a cord myself. A French knitter basically makes a cord very easily by using these pegs. Um, but this one has some cool features that I think will speed it up a lot and make it actually faster than hand knitting an I-cord. So I'm going to open this up a bit. I started to open the package so it would be faster. But I want to show you the neat features that I'm excited to play with. So it comes with an instruction book in here. But um, I was looking at this at Creativation online and they had some cool videos of how to use it. I love that it's got a hole to hold the little pick. This is the little pick you use. So the way this works is you attach the yarn around here and then for every stitch you basically normally would have to wrap yarn around here, pick it up with this hook and you know drop it off to create the knit stitch. 
The cool part about this is this tensioning arm and the fact that this disc rotates. So with those two combined, you actually have yarn coming in from here and it wraps around the hook automatically. So all you do to stitch is with this finger, you rotate to the next stitch, pick up the yarn, throw it over, rotate to the next stitch, and it's automatically going to place the yarn for you. So I think that'll make it really fast. The other thing I like is it comes with the two different sizes. So you can make a bigger cord or a smaller cord. And I think with this smaller cord one, looking at the size of the lip and all of that, I think I might be able to work with leather on this. If I get some thin leather cording, I think I might be able to make a nice bold braided leather cord um, to use for like a handle for a purse or something. So I'm going to try that. I don't know for sure. It's possible that the cord will be too heavy and will break the pegs, but hopefully not because I don't want to have to get a new one, but um, I'm going to try it and see if that works. Uh, no promises. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work, but you don't know till you try. So, okay, so that is, eh, let me put that away. So that is the one thing that I got. The other thing they sent me, I don't know when I'll get around to using this. I plan to use both of these and review them at some point, but I don't have an actual plan in mind for this one. This is their Swift Beading Needle. The cool thing about this needle is it's got, it, it's the tip is what's cool. It's got like a fish hook tip. Um, I wonder if you can even see it. Can you see? It's got a barbed tip. You can't even see it, it's so small, but you can sort of see that tiny little barb there. So what that does is it actually holds the, um, oh, I don't know how to close this again. I'm so bad. <laughs> it actually holds the um, bead in place as you string it on. Um, so you can just stick it into the beads and it will pick them up. It's kind of like a fish hook, right? It'll stick onto the beads and pull them up. You can see it here. You can see the little barb on it. So I'm curious to see how that works. I have to come up with a beading project to try it on. Um, maybe I'll make a beaded purse to go with the leather handles that I'm gonna try and make. Um, but that, I'm hoping to get something out this summer with both of these things. So that was Clover. I got something else exciting. This, I'm gonna have to switch cameras here. This is a game called Arch Ravels. Isn't it cool? It is a yarn and knitting and crochet based game. So now here's the cool story behind this, okay? I was at a gaming convention that I go to every year when, when we still had these things um, called Origins. It's in, I wanna say Cleveland or Columbus, I can't remember which, but it's, it's close by, it's drivable. Um, so anyway, I was, maybe it's in Indiana. No, Indiana's Gen Con. Okay, anyway, Cleveland or Columbus, one of the two. Um, but I was there and normally I don't go to the show floor in the, at these things, but my husband saw this game and he literally grabbed me and dragged me over to go see it. I don't like show floors. They tend to be pretty busy and bustling. And But he dragged me over to this booth. He's like, you have to see this booth. And what they had at the time was a prototype that they were showing off of the game. So of course I'm, you know, I'm a gamer and I'm, I'm knitting and crocheting and I'm like, oh my God, this is the best thing ever. So I ended up getting in a very long conversation with them, probably talked way more than they even wanted. Um, but we talked about the mechanics of the game. We talked about different things that they could incorporate, all that kind of stuff. And they were so sweet that when they put up the Kickstarter not too long after that, they actually listed me as a crafting consultant, which, you know, I didn't, I honestly, I was just talking, um, but I thought that was very sweet of them to recognize me that way. So that was very nice. And then they did send me a free copy of the game to try out and review. So I'm going to play this just as soon as I can get it onto the table with my husband and then write up a review for you. I'll probably do a more complete unboxing and show you all of the different components. Um, I'll get that out pretty soon, but I'm excited to get this on the table. I've waited years for that. Um, I think I even told you guys about it like three years ago when it happened, but that was, that was Arch Ravels. That's from XYZ Game Labs. 
and um, I've got one more, one more package to show you, and this one has two million things in it. This is from Art Esprit. So if you don't remember, a couple years ago maybe, or a year ago, a couple years ago, the last time I went to Creativation, I met these folks at Art Esprit, and they have this great product for sublimation that, you know, sublimation used to be a thing that you had to use a big heat press, and you had to do it like, you know, you need a lot of machinery for it, right? They decided they wanted to make sublimation accessible to the home crafter. So they created these sublimation pens and they're fantastic. Um, but I did a butterfly coaster and I did a personalized um, uh, zippered pouch that like a pencil pouch um, where I drew my own design and applied it to a crocheted pencil pouch that was crocheted in polyester yarn. So fun. Um, but that was a little while ago and they have since come out with so much more stuff. Um, and I decided I wanted to make a bandana for my dog, Millie. So I asked them, you know, hey, can I have a bandana and some pens? Well, they're putting together a design team and they were excited, you know, we got to talk and we were all excited. And they said, how would you like to be a guest designer on our design team? So coming up in May or June, coming up soon, it's due to them in May, I don't know when they're gonna post it. I'm gonna be doing that bandana project and they sent me, they said, we'll send you everything you need. So I thought they're sending me a bandana and they're sending me, you know, a couple of the tools that I need. Oh no, they sent me so much stuff. I got to show you all this. I'm so excited. Okay, so I'm going to switch over here and show you one by one all the stuff that they sent me. So first of all, they sent me, well, here's a folder full of full of uh, information and materials and stuff so that I know what I'm talking about when I share it with you. And this is a stamp pad because now you can use stamps with the sublimation ink. So not only did they send me a stamp pad, but they sent me an acrylic block to put stamps on. They sent me some of their own stamps. Uh, let me dig this out here. Sorry, there's so much stuff in here. Um, where's the stamps? I saw them. They sent me some of their own stamps, which if you'll notice are not reversed. Normal stamps are reversed, but for sublimation, you want your design to be reversed. So these stamps are not reversed. Um, you can use regular stamps, you just have to reverse them. So, but these are not reversed. So these are perfect for sublimation. Um, and oh, what's this? I don't even know what this is. Ooh, this. I am so happy they sent me this, you guys. This is a work surface. It's a thick, like think of like maybe two mouse pads put together. Thick foam work surface. And the reason this is so awesome is because if I want to show you what I'm doing and I want to actually demonstrate this on video. I don't have a really good setup where I can put an ironing board down in front of me. So with this work surface, I can iron on this table. And I was trying to think how I was gonna rig it with towels and all of that, but they sent me this, so I don't need to do that. I have a beautiful pad to work on. Such an exciting thing I wasn't expecting. <laughs> um, I, I, I don't know if you can tell, I'm really excited by all of this. I actually opened the bag this morning. I was planning to show it to you, so I hadn't opened it yet. And I'm like, I better open it so I know what's in there. Oh my God, it's the, it's everything, it's the whole store. Okay, hang on, let me, let me go back. Okay, so while we're on the subject of protective surfaces, this is silicone paper, which when you're doing the sublimation, you actually make a sandwich basically with silicone paper on both sides so that you don't get any ink on your iron and you don't get any ink on your surface. So I was running out of this, so glad they sent me a roll of that. And this is the pet bandana that I'm gonna use. Um, it's a medium size. I think they sent me a couple so that I, it looks like they sent me three so that I can try it out. And if I make a mistake, I have another one. Um, so I will be testing it before I show it to you. Um, there's more, there's more. They sent me a whole bunch of blanks. Oh wait, here, this is heat tape. And this is 
tape that resists heat. So like if, if you're sublimating onto a piece of material, you want to tape your pattern down so that it doesn't shift around while you're ironing, right? Um, but regular tape will melt at the heats that you want to use for sublimation. It'll melt if you iron over it too much and then it'll come off and it'll shift or it'll leave residue. Well, this is heat resistant tape. So you can tape stuff down without running the risk of melting your tape. So that is absolutely a must for sublimation. Going back to the stamper, they actually sent me extra ink for the stamp pad too. I'm gonna have to make a lot of stuff to use up all of this ink that they sent me. Um, and they sent me all of these blanks. Now look at this, I've got bookmarks, I've got plastic keychains, I've got bag tags in wood. I did not know you could sublimate onto wood, but apparently you can sublimate onto wood. I don't know if it's got a specific like coating on it. It probably does. I'll have to read the literature and, and see about that. Um, and some textured coasters, so much fun. I used the uh, glass coaster, I believe, or a clear, it was a clear coaster, it was acrylic coaster um, for my last project. So this will be fun to try a different coaster. Um, I'm gonna be doing a lot of sublimation projects, I think. And the other thing that I was worried about, I didn't want to ask them for more pens, but it's been a few years since I used my pens and I was worried that they might be dried up. I'm going to try them. They might not be, but I don't have to worry because they sent me a whole new packet of pens. And not only that, they sent me all their new colors too. This is all black. This is chisel tip. This is different colors, see? And then this one is different colors on top of that. They've got like primary colors and pastel colors and these ones are called botanicals. So I am so excited. Oh my god you guys. I don't, I will never use up all of this stuff that they sent me. So this is so exciting. Um, let me put it all back. One of the things that I have found as I've been doing these product reviews, I'm mostly knit and crochet, right? But, and just like you guys, I know most of you guys are mostly crochet, but sometimes it's fun to try other crafts. And I especially like doing that in the summer when you don't necessarily want to be sitting under a giant blanket that you're crocheting or anything like that. Um, but what I found is that what really gets me is when I'm working with a company where the people are nice. I know that sounds so corny, but if I'm working with someone who knows who I am when I talk to them, who sends me extra goodies, who's very, you know, who's friendly and helpful, and when I ask them questions, they're supportive, I feel like if I share that company with you guys, they're gonna treat you the same way. So hopefully they do because Art Esprit is wonderful and I love working with them. Actually, all these companies I've been showing you have been wonderful to work with. Um, I tend to gravitate towards companies that not only have a good product, but also just have really good people. Um, so that's what I like to share with you. Okay, I think I put all of that away. Let's talk about what's coming up for next week. Um, first of all, next week is our last step in the Simply Sweet Raglan baby sweater. So the very last step on this, on this knit along, is doing the sleeves. Um, we have done everything else, so we're going to pick up stitches, or we're gonna pick up the stitches that we bound off for the sleeves, or not bound off, that we set aside for the sleeves. We're gonna pick up a couple under the arms, and then we are going to knit the sweater, or sorry, knit the sleeves, and the cuffs and bind off in the same way that we bound off the hem. That is coming next week and then we'll be all done with the sweater, which also means that the giveaway for, and I didn't bring any down to show you, but the giveaway for the needles from um, We Crochet slash Knit Picks, the giveaway from, for those needles is going to end very shortly so make sure to get your entries in um, these are this is a fantastic set of needles and a case that goes with it so be sure to get your entries in on the simply sweet baby raglan sweater cal post which again is linked in the post that's in the description on this video 
Um, the other thing I'm going to do is the um, flower stitch, which is from this border on the Starflower Doily, which will come out in a couple of weeks. But I'm going to do a tutorial for the flower stitch. I know I've been promising it. I have recorded it. I just have to edit it and get it posted. That will be later this week. Um, I don't have any plans as of yet for next week's Lunchtime Live. The things I'm thinking of are either demoing the flower stitch, because it's actually pretty fast, or um, showing you how to do what I call a double single crochet, which is another way to start a row of double crochets without using chains. Um, I might show you that one, because I've been using that a lot recently. It's not a chainless starting double crochet, which I've shown you before. It's kind of like two single crochets stacked on top of each other. In fact, I've heard it called a stacked single crochet. Um, I might show you that one next week unless there's something else that you guys want to see. So as always, let me know if there's anything you want to see because I'm happy to show you whatever. And Beth actually did let me know that she wanted to see the seersucker stitch in the middle of this square. So let's take a look at how to do that. All right, so what I have here is a sample that I started, and this is actually from the pattern. So this is the actual pattern for the center of that square. Now, this part is the seersucker stitch. These two edge stitches are just garter stitch borders that I put on because that makes it easy to pick up stitches along the edge. So the actual seersucker stitch is a four stitch repeat. If you want it to be symmetrical, you'll need to add one more stitch so that you can end the same way that you started. Like if I wanted this here, right, you'd need to add one more stitch. But I wanted an even number. I really wanted 30 stitches across, so I didn't make mine symmetrical. And that's okay. It doesn't have to be, right? You can start and stop. It could be here. It could be wherever you want. You can start and stop wherever you want. But these four stitches and these eight rows are the repeat of the pattern. So I've worked one full pattern repeat because the texture shows up really only after you've done a couple of repeats. Um, it's not the strongest of textures, right? It's just a knit pearl pattern. But you can sort of see these diamonds that are forming. See, here's the center of a diamond right here. Um, and that is the idea of the stitch. When you do a larger swatch, you can see it. Yarns that are more springy are going to show the stitch better. Cotton, it makes it very, very subtle. Like you can barely see it here, but you can sort of see the diamonds, right? That is the seersucker stitch. So this next thing I'm going to say, some of you may go, huh, and it may be like more confusing, but for me, it helped me in my head to think of the seersucker stitch as a moss stitch that's been interrupted by stockinette. So if you look at this, if there were two pearls here, right, then that would be moss stitch. It would just be alternating knits and pearls in two row you know, groups, and that would be moss stitch. So what we've done is we've taken moss stitch and we've interrupted it by making these two stitches stockinette. And that helped me kind of picture it. If that doesn't help you, don't worry about it. Not something that you need to think about. Let's just dig in and get into the pattern. So I'm starting from the beginning of the repeat, which is row one here, okay? And because my edges are garter stitch, I'm always gonna knit the first and last stitch of every row. So go ahead and knit the first stitch. Now, I have two repeats or three repeats, I think I've got, let's see, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. I've got three repeats going across. Um, so I'm going to repeat this section three times. Well, right now it's just basically moss stitch, right? So we start with a knit and then a purl. And we're just gonna go knit purl all the way across until we get to the end and then do a knit stitch at the end. And unfortunately, unlike a YouTube video, I cannot just speed this up. So you're gonna have to watch me knit and purl back and forth. Um, this part is pretty much your standard moss stitch. Now, rows, all of the um, odd rows establish the pattern. That's the right side rows, okay? All of the even rows are basically knit the knits and purl the purls. 
So you're going to knit and purl what you see. Um, you're just repeating the pattern but from the back side. So that's the first row of the pattern. Now we're going to switch it to the back side and we're just going to knit the purls and purl or knit the knits and purl the purls as we see them other than these two edge stitches. So the two edge stitches are not part of the seersucker pattern. So we're going to knit, purl, knit, purl, basically. It's the exact same pattern as for the previous row. So oh, split the yarn there. Let's get that back on there right. There we go. Okay, so knit the edge stitch and then we start with knit and then you can see this one's a purl so we're going to purl the purl and then knit and purl all the way across. I am sorry that this row is so boring. The fun happens in the next row. Okay, and feel free to stop me or slow me down if you have questions or anything like that, but this is where we actually start getting into the pattern. Um, okay, so on this row is where we have the interrupt, all right? This is where we have that odd stitch out that isn't the purl like it should be. So we're going to knit the first stitch, right? Then purl, and then we're going to knit three, purl one, knit three, purl one that extra knit stitch is going to fall in the center of one of the diamonds. If you see these columns here, right? Do you see these columns here of stockinette? That is what these columns are here, okay? So our extra knit stitch is going to line up with one of these columns. In this case, it's going to line up with this one. So you can see that this is where the knit stitch is going to be. Okay, the only purl stitch in the whole row is going to be on top of this column. Okay, so when we get to this column where you've got a long column of knit stitches already there, that's going to be a purl. So you can kind of, like you don't have to memorize how many knits and how many purls you, and which stitch to start with. You can kind of read the pattern in your fabric and follow along. So this we know is a long string of knit stitches already. Let me zoom in just a little bit. There we go. This is already a long string of knit stitches, so this is where we're going to put a purl, okay? Then we're going to knit three. So one, two, three. Now we come to another long string of knit stitches, so we're going to purl. And again, the pattern is purl one, knit three. So we knit three. Then we got another long string of stitches, so we're going to purl. And knit three. Except now we've come to the edge, so after we knit these three, I'm going to go ahead and do another knit stitch for that girder stitch edge that I'm making. Okay, and now we've established the center of this diamond here. So purl side, or not purl side, sorry, wrong side, is always just knitting the knits and purling the purls, even on these pattern rows here. So we knit the first stitch, and then you can see here we've got three purls and then a knit, right? So that's the pattern here. The other side was one purl and three knits. This one is three purls and one knit because we're on the wrong side of the fabric. So three purls, one knit. Three purls. And this one's a knit, so one knit. Three purls. And a knit. And then we've come to the end, so I'm going to knit the last stitch. Okay, now the next row, or the next pair of rows, is again going to be moss stitch. So we go from one pattern stitch to or one pair of rows for a pattern stitch, one pair of rows for a moss stitch. So this one is pretty much the sa exactly the same as the first two rows that we did. So we knit the first stitch, purl, and then we just go knit purl all the way across.
Now the reason that this ends up being an eight row repeat instead of a four row repeat is that we want to offset these diamonds. So the next set of two rows is going to be a little bit different than the one we just worked. It's basically going to be offset by three stitches. We just have to get there. Okay, so now we're on the back side, and again, we're going to knit the knits and purl the purls. So we knit the first stitch, and this one's a knit, so we're going to knit it. This one's a purl, so we're going to purl it, and so on and so forth all the way across, and that makes our moss stitch rows. Moss stitch is like seed stitch, but it's a two row repeat instead of just a one row. Like it doesn't alternate every row, it alternates every other row. Okay, knit the last stitch. And now we're ready for the next pattern row. So again, Conceptually, we're going to do the same thing. Where we see these long columns of knit stitches, we're going to put a purl. But this is actually flipped because last time when we had the long column of knit stitches, it was here, right? So now we're, we're not starting in the same way. We're not starting off with a purl. We're actually, our first purl goes here after two stitches. And you can see that in, where are we here? Do, 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 do. here two stitches purl and then one stitch and then two more stitches so it's like two stitches purl and then three knits and then purl and then three knits and then purl right so it's still three knits and one purl but we start with just two knits of course I am not counting my uh, garter stitch edge in that so two knits And then we get to the top of one of these columns again, so we're going to do a purl. And then three knits. And then we get to the top of one of these long columns again, so we do a purl. Three knits and a purl. And then we end with just one more stitch here, so we're going to knit it and that's right here right and then our last edge stitch we knit because we're doing garter stitch on the edge so for the purl row after this that would complete the eight row repeat i would again knit the knits purl the pearls but you can sort of see the diamond texture that's forming here and those eight rows we just did seven of them but the, that plus the next row forms the seersucker stitch so that is what we did here these eight rows and that's all there is to it. It's literally just knits and purls, but it's about the arrangement that gives it this diamond texture. Um, very easy beginner stitch. Um, you just have to keep track of where you are in the pattern, and it helps if you can read your work and distinguish your knit stitches from your purl stitches. And that's all there is to seersucker stitch. So any questions? I know I've gone through a lot of stuff today, um, a lot of new stuff to show you and all of that. Any questions on any of it? Um, anything you wanna take a look at again before I say goodbye? I'm gonna hang out for a couple minutes and just see if anyone has any questions. Um, I'm trying to think of anything. Oh, one thing I forgot to tell you when I was showing you that game, the um, Art Travels. I found out after the conference that they're actually located in Chicago, which is right where I am too. So that was kind of cool. They're, they're a hometown company. Um, okay, I think that's it. I haven't seen any comments, so I'm going to wrap up. Thank you for watching. I hope to see you again next week and have a wonderful weekend. Have a great rest of your week. Um, I will see you later. Bye.